Inside, we can see again that uh, controversial rib raker rear view mirror. And I call it the rib raker because if you're not wearing your seat belts, which were optional, and you hit something in the car stop, you kept moving, well, you might uh, make like a xylophone with your, with your ribs as you uh, made music passing through the windshield with that, that mirror tickling your ribs. Hey, Stephen Young here doing the junkyard crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with a 1963 Dodge Custom 880. What is that? It's not a Charger, it's not a Coronet, it's not a Challenger, it's a, a weird old car, right? Well, let's remember that 1960 was the first year of the 60s for Dodge. They had one sized car, full size, that was it. Well, 61, they got the Lancer. Well, by 1963, they had the A-body Dart, the mid-sized 330, 440, et cetera, and the full-sized C-body, so A, B, C. The Dodge Custom 880 is a C-body. This is the biggest Dodge you could buy in 1963. Strictly V8s, no six cylinders, not even a 318 Poly was possible. These things always had a V8 engine, big block type engine. That was all there was to it. Now, in total, there were 28,266 Dodge Custom 880s built of them. About one in 10 or 2,804 were two-door hardtops like this one. The vast majority were wagons or four-door family cars. This is kind of a rare bird right here. Again, 2,804 of these things made. And this is the full-size C-body in 1963. Now, let's take a look under the hood and see what we find. And before we do that, this grill, listen to this. That is metal, I mean strictly metal on this thing. And again, 63, this is a full-size C-body, semi-unitized construction. So what we're gonna see is, okay, this is the base engine. This is the 361 two-barrel, and this would have had 265 horsepower. Uh, optional would have been a 383. There was even a 4, 13, a 426 cubic engine in 1963, which was possible. It was not the max wedge, no cross rams. That was strictly used on the mid-sized B-body platform. For 63, the 4, 426 in this would have been the street wedge, which would have had uh, 365 horsepower. Still a plenty of engine, but with this one here, we see the base 383 or 361 two-barrel. $77 was spent on power steering. But oddly, this one has manual drum brakes with that uh, single pot master cylinder. Again, up till 1966, all Chrysler's, in fact, pretty much all American cars, had single circuit brakes, meaning that if you lost one corner of the car, if a hose broke or rubber stripped or whatever, brake fluid went out and you had about three pumps and you were rolling without any brakes. So for 67, they all got dual circuit, were diverse, the front and the back. But again, single circuit brakes are okay as long as everything's up to snuff and like new. But again, this car is semi-unitized construction. You see the frame here, this heavy duty stuff with the upper control arms, that frame does not go to the rear bumper. Rather, it ends just under the driver's seat where it bolts to the underside of the body shell. And the body shell itself from the firewall back to the rear bumper, that is unitized. So this is what we call semi-unitized construction. The inner fenders here are not structural. These are just basically floating, whereas on the A body and the B body, the small and the mid-sized car, that was structural. So Chrysler had different approaches to unitized and semi-unitized construction in 63. And one thing these all had was torsion bar suspension up front. And here's that cool Fratzog hood ornament right there. How cool is that? Seeing standard equipment on the custom 880s. And uh, the Fratzog is back, of course. The Dodge Charger Banshee electric car is uh, making use of the Fratzog. But uh, a great example. Again, this is one of 2,804 two-door hardtops. So let's pop the door and see what we have inside. Gotta love that rusty Chrysler stuff. So take a peek at the VIN, if you would, Shane, right there. You can see right here, this decode, and we have five, which is 880 series V8, one, 880 series again, three, 1963, three is Jefferson Ave plant, Detroit, Michigan, and 196339 is the sequence number on this car. Push button torque flight right here to the left of the steering wheel. That was $211 more than the base three-speed manual. Uh, and theoretically, three-speed manuals could be had with floor shifters or column shifters in 63. 64 would bring the four-speed, but uh, again, here's the, the dial wind push button drive right there. Very cool stuff. Now this here, it's sort of here for reference or comparison. This is Car Life magazine, February of 61. And in 61, the Dodge Dart, 
name was applied to the full-size car like we have right here, 122 inch long wheelbase. For 62, the Dart name went on the smaller B body. And in 63, the Dart went on the compact A body. Confused yet? Me too. But anyway, here is the article inside on how the Dodge Dart basically full-size. The bones of the car we're looking at right now are also seen here, although the grill and the quarter panels are, are more evolved or less evolved here. You choose. Again, this is two years before the 63 was built that we're looking at right now. But look at those rear quarters with that reverse fin. That was, again, Virgil Exner at the height of his uh, madness, if you will. <laughs> I mean, it was brilliant. It was beautiful. But again, it was something that was uh, controversial. Sales were not strong. But if we look at the quarters on this one, by 63, things were getting toned down. The same theme is seen, that reverse uh, flare, but again, toned way down and a big chrome cap here. And no fins on this one here, strictly uh, a big chrome uh, cap. And again, these things are beautiful, but so hard to find in good condition. These are made of pot metal, which has gases and reactions that happen inside and cause rusting that comes from the inside out. These can actually begin to rot away on the shelf of a dealership with time. You really have a hard time finding these things. You can get them re chrome but the pitting is a real hard thing to deal with. But again, uh, interesting to see underneath, here are the originals. And again, you can see this little cap right here, which is added in to cover a hole that here might have been a remnant of the 1963 quarter panel stamping that they facelifted for 60, or the 62 and 63. So in other words, sometimes you'll see little hints, recessive genes of last year's stuff being used now in the 63 model hidden under a chrome plate. Now the trunk on this thing is massive. And again, we see the frat sog right there. And again, the Dodge Charger Banshee, the electric car. We'll see how that turns out. The Banshee is a great idea, but I dare say that the Hemi is not gone yet. We'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But let's use the uh, Mopar Universal Trunk Key right here and see if we can open this trunk. Drum roll, please. Put that in there. Okay, here we go. Gold bars, Jimmy Hoffa. Let's find out. Ah, okay. Well, that's, you know, it's pretty cool. We got the uh, some hubcaps here from a 64 or 5 Dodge, not from this car, but cool. There you go. Just say no. Air cleaner. This is the original air cleaner lid, single snorkel on the two barrel engine. Uh, the base plate would be around here somewhere, which would be have, have a small hole for the two barrel. Some Napa transmission fluid. So this car probably had some sort of a transmission pan or seal leak. Had to keep that thing going. And ah, Schlitz, Schlitz light. There you go. An early can with the pop top. You might remember these things. The big problem with these things was you peel it off, throw it in the sand at the beach. Some kid runs along, cuts their foot open. So that's why we went to those sort of the ones we have now where the, the tab stays put. Old, old school. Budweiser, the king of beers, just say no. Schlitz, there we go. And before the aluminum cans came on strong, here's a steel Schlitz can. And this is what I'm talking about with the reverse flip, these deals right here, like that. These took over so you wouldn't cut your foot because this thing would stay with the can. And finally, oh, look at this, silicone glaze. There you go, Amway, remember Amway? And the model, the vehicle, this looks like probably eh, kind of a generic thing, kind of like a Mustang, Camaro, who knows kind of a thing, but Amway uh, vehicle silicone glaze didn't work that good because the paint on this thing is pretty well shot. To continue our tour up this side, and again, this beautiful fastback or semi-fastback roof on such a big car really does work. I love the look of it. And inside we can see again that, uh, controversial rib raker rear view mirror. And I call it the rib raker because if you're not wearing your seat belts, which were optional, and you hit something in the car stop, you kept moving, well, you might uh, make like a xylophone with your, with your ribs as you uh, made music passing through the windshield with that, that mirror tickling your ribs. Now, right here we have uh, the custom 880 badge. And again, the custom 880 was t one of two. The 880 was the basic full-size Dodge, but custom 880 was the deluxe version. And again, a little more glitz inside. Bench seat, of course. You gotta love that brocade upholstery. Just weird stuff. Looks like grandma's couch. But again, uh, that was, uh, you know, pretty the height of luxury. Vinyl was possible at this point in time, but that brocade stuff right it was, was part of the interior on the custom 880. And can't close that door. I'm not that guy. I'm not gonna wreck this car. And carthritis just doesn't stop. It's not just for people. The rear axle on this one is gone. This would have had the uh, eight and three quarter with the dreaded, I mean, lovely uh, two piece axle shafts wherein there'd be a nut and a cotter pin on the end of the drum. So if you wanted to pull the, the, the axle out, you had to get a pulling tool and uh, have, a, have a war with the thing. But somebody grabbed the axle. These springs still there. But again, these were strictly um, 
Leaf spring suspension, GM, uh, at this point in time was getting into the coil springs at the back. Ford was still doing Leafs, but in 65, Ford would also go to coil springs at the back for more of a boulevard ride. Whereas Chrysler stuck with leaf springs at the back right into the 1980s, and they work pretty well. As long as they're isolated with rubber, so be it. Well, that's the story of this 1963 Dodge Custom 880. It's not a uh, Polara. It's not a Dodge Dart. It's a full-size C-body, the Custom 880. Now you know. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel. Come back tomorrow for more Junkyard Crawl.